That means you sent me to a clause with all false variables in it. But if I can always find a way out, no matter which clause you send me, to a variable that's true, then I win the game. I've turned this problem of deciding the truth or falseness of this formula into a problem about a game, a kid's game. And if you can answer who wins on this kid's game, you can answer the question of this formula. So in this game, if we both play as good as possible, you guys will always win. The same way we can't get a satisfiable formula here. But if I change this formula around so that there was a way for me to win, you guys wouldn't stand a chance. I'd pick the right choice here. Whatever choice you pick, I'd pick the right choice there. Whatever clause you threw me in, there would be a way out because I would go to a true variable that's opened up here. All right, so let me stop for a second. Again, here's the reduction. Three diamonds, one for each variable. Three circles, one for each clause. Connect the circles to the opposite of what they were there so that you connect them essentially to what are false values, to what are, to what are closed up. You leave the true values open. And then you play the game, picking variables. The adversary picks the clause. I pick the variable at the very end. All right, let me stop for a second. Questions about this? For an even number of variables, you'd want to hook them up in the opposite direction. Because then it would be your turn to pick the clause. You mean if it ended with a for all? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I think you can assume that this game always starts with a there exists and ends with a there exists. QBF starts with a there exists and ends with a there exists. I don't think it ever ends in for all. But you could certainly do just what you said. If it did end in for all, you could just alternate the moves at the end with an extra edge to make sure that it, it gets alternated the other way, to make sure that the other person chooses the clause. And, that you choose the variable at the end. Sure, you can do that. Other questions? I just don't get the last step. I choose C1, and what are your choices, and what does the ramifications of your choices? The, um, if I choose C1, and then you're saying you have a path to X1 naught. Yeah, let's. Yeah, in this game, you can't use the same country that's been used before. So if something's been X'd out, then you lose the game. Yeah, that's very important. Right. Without that, you can't see who wins or loses. Right. If the thing is blocked, you're stuck. So the only way you're open here is if you go to places which were not chosen before. That's why we put in the opposites here, because we choose the ones that are true, and then we leave open the ones that are um, that are the opposites of those. Does that make sense? I think kind of. You want to? Let me just do one more thing and then we'll quit. Let, let me make up a different formula, write out the game, and then we'll play the game and see if by playing the game we can figure out whether the formula is satisfiable or not. Don't look at the formula, just look at the game and we'll try to do that. So I'm just going to make something up. Uh, there exists an x for all. I don't like x1, x2, x2. I'll just use y's and z's. And I'll just make this up. I have no idea if it works or not. <laughs> you got to wonder. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, scare myself. I'm going to make four clauses this time just for. I'm only using three variables again because the variables take up room, but the clauses don't take so much room, so I'm going to put four of those in. So don't think about this problem. Don't think about who, whether it's satisfiable or not. Let's just make the reduction to show that this reduction really works. Let's try to show that solving the game is going to help us solve this problem, and vice versa. So here's what the reduction looks like. Make sure you can do it. It's mechanical. It's very fast. Uh, we have a diamond. I won't put the arrows in. Everybody knows it kind of goes down. Okay? I got a diamond for every variable. So I got x y, z, I connect them this way, right? I got another edge here, then I go to the four clauses, one, two, I'll put two on this side, three, four. Now it's looking pretty. <laughs> All right, let's do the opposites here. Uh, I'll just mark this x, x bar, y, y bar, so we remember what we're doing, z, z bar. 
this is going to be C1, C2, C3, C4. Okay, so C1, this is going to be X bar, Y, Z bar. So we do it to the opposite. This goes to X, help me, Y, Y bar, and Z. Okay? The next one goes to X bar, Y bar, and Z. And now let's do this guy. X. Oh, color chalk. Very good idea. Color chalk, color chalk. Absolutely. That's the pink one. The idea is use different colors. I know, I know. <laughs> I got I got another color. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, so you got pink, blue, purple, and orange. You're missing a, a what did I miss? You're missing an arrow on each of those nodes. From the bottom. Oh, okay. well, that's from the bottom. Oh, right, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> am I or am I not? You're not. Contradicting the fact that you're always right? That's... Oh, it's my God, lucky no, day. No, no. All right. Live up. That's right. You're not All missing right. it yet, but of course you will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. This one goes to uh, X. Help me, Erica. Y. y. All right, and then the last one is orange, and it's going to go to X. Not Y. Not Y. And Z. All right, fine. <laughs> now let's play. Doesn't that color help? It's Picasso. It's pretty. I kind of like it. Let's play this game. I'm not going to mark it up. We'll just play it. And well, I guess I'll have to mark it up. So I'll just fill in the circles as we go. All right, you guys want to go first or second? First. All right, first it is. You already checked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, which way do you want to go, Michael? Uh, let's go not X. Go this way. Right. <laughs> um, I go here. You go here. I'm gonna go here. You go here. I go here. Your turn. Uh, not see. You go here. Mm -hmm. I go here. You go here. Now it's my turn. All right. So now I'm gonna look for a good one. If I go here, you're gonna be able to win by going this way or that way. If I go here, you're going to be able to win. If I go here, you're going to be able to win. If I, you can win all everywhere. All right. So I don't like my choice here. I'm changing it. I'm going to go this way instead. Doesn't do a damn thing, right? Nope. Didn't fill in anything. All right. So you guys can win, but let's figure out the assignment that 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 applies to that. You chose x being false. I chose anything, any y, and you chose z being true. False, false, false. Oh, false, good. So presumably, according to this set of choices, x false and z false, this formula is going to end up being true. And I think we should be able to check that, right? x false, z false makes this true, no matter what y is. x false, z false makes this true, no matter what y is. x false, z false makes this true, no matter what y is. Same here. So you guys win. Now, I want to convince you that this is something not an accident. This game is exactly what's going on here. This will have a solution exactly when you win. This will not have a solution exactly when you lose. If there was a way for me to pick well, so that whatever you picked here, I could pick a clause that was connected to all the things that were false, then all those things would have these white boxes on them. And that would correspond specifically to me being able to choose the middle variable so that when we were all done, no matter what you chose for x and z, I found a clause in this collection of four, all of whom were false, all of whom were pointing to things that you filled in there. You get it? Just to give you a sense. When I first thought of this al alternate to this problem, you know, where you play on your own, so I had no idea, because I had never seen this pattern.